Um, hello once again, everyone, and um, thank you for joining us for the webinar, Making the Most of the um, Research Data Alliance 21st Plenary Meeting and the International Data Week 2023. Um, so um, my name is Irina Hope, and I'm Research Data Alliance uh, Global Events Manager. And today I am joined by my colleagues, Hilary Hanaho, um, Nigella Retterberg, and Connie Claire, who will be presenting their webinar with me. And um, just a quick um, look at our agenda for today. Um, the webinar will cover the general overview of the Research Data Alliance, what IDW is, and the components of the RJ and SI DataCon. We will go through about the 21st plenary meeting, uh, the program and pathways and how to navigate it. Um, we will touch a little bit about the registration and our online platform, which is going to be used during the International Data Week. And at the end, we will have questions and answers. And so we invite you to ask any questions um, you might have during the webinar and just put them in the Zoom chat. And at the end, we will have time to, um, to go through them. So I would now like to introduce Hilary Hanaho, who will be presenting, um, who will take an over and presenting the overview of the Research Data Alliance. Thank you. Thank you, Irina. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. It's uh, really nice to see you here and to uh, see that you're interested in learning a bit more about the uh, RDA, the Research Data Alliance plenary meeting in Salzburg uh, in, a, in a little over a month's time. Um, so I, I will, I'm the Secretary General of the Research Data Alliance, which is a wonderful job. I represent the global community of over 13,000 um, members that we have from over 150 countries. And it's um, a great honor and pleasure to have this role. So what is the Research Data Alliance? What is this community? Well, it's an international community, as I said before. And the wonderful thing about the Research Data Alliance that is that it's driven by the community. So my role is to promote the work that the wonderful uh, global uh, group of people do. And what do they do there? The idea behind the Research Data Alliance, which was launched 10 years ago, that's uh, hence the confetti and the balloons in all of our backgrounds, as we're celebrating 10 years of the Research Data Alliance, was to to do just that, the, all this digital data, what part of it needs to be um, stored, what part of it needs to be, uh, how, what are the solutions for that, how can we support cross-disciplinary as well activities around and solutions for data to support uh, and to accelerate, if you like, innovation in a data-driven world. And so it was created by uh, a series of funders from around the globe uh, to do just that. And I like to refer to it as a greenhouse because in the greenhouses that you see in the pictures on this slide, there are many, many different varieties of plants all together under the same roof. Um, and that's exactly what we do in RDA. We nurture, we grow, we support all different aspects of uh, data solutions. So when we were set up 10 years ago, we had a very ambitious vision uh, uh, and it still stands today, which is in the next slide. Um, the uh, vision is that researchers and innovators can openly share and reuse data across technologies, disciplines and countries to address, of course, the grand challenges of society. And the technologies, the disciplines and the countries are really important here. All technologies, all disciplines and all countries. Uh, so at any time, any place, anywhere with any technology, that is our ambition and our goal. And how do we how are we trying to get to, to this uh, ambitious vision? Well, through the building, the social and the technical bridges to achieve that vision. And the technical bridges, of course, are the solutions that the Research Data Alliance community develop and make openly available for um, all to take up, to reuse and to implement. 
but also the social aspect uh, that's equally as important for us to create this global network to put people into uh, contact with each other and to ensure, uh, if you like, cross-pollination, cross-fertilization, to go back to the uh, metaphors around plants, um, of uh, people and expertise and different stakeholders. And we do that through uh, with six fundamental guiding principles. Everything in the research data aligns all work is done openly. We strive for consensus. We strive uh, that there is agreement between the community, that everything that we do is inclusive, irrespective of where you are in the world, uh, what language you speak, et cetera. We also are aiming for harmonization. And in the RDA sense, that means uh, trying to reduce uh, the silos, trying to reduce the duplication of efforts, harmonization in terms of standards as well, trying to come up with standards uh, to, to support the community and to harmonize work. It's community driven, as I stated at the very, very beginning, and everything that's done by the community is non-profit and technology neutral in order to ensure that it is in fact adoptable, implementable, customizable. So how is that done? Very briefly, before I pass on to my colleagues, uh, I like to, to refer to RDA as a family. Um, it is a very large family. If you come to the plenary uh, meeting and IDW, I hope you will feel that family atmosphere. We always do. It's a, a, a very energetic community, uh, the Research Data Alliance. And part of the family are the individuals. So through the, the uh, different mechanisms, which I will show afterwards, group, working groups and interest groups, focusing on specific activities, individuals give their volunteer time to work together to uh, identify these solutions uh, and they generate the outputs. Then we have a family of organizations. Uh, organizational members in ORDA are actually paying members. So they're not, they support us financially to, um, to, to maintain, of course, the, the work and to provide the daily operations. So that's why we say 80. Um, but really, they are the organizations, of course, are fundamental in the concepts around the outputs and the work that the, the community does, because ultimately it's organizations and institutions that will adopt and implement and take up the solutions and therefore make them viable and um, implementable. And then regions and nations. We refer to them as regions in RDA, but we also mean countries. It can be groups of countries or countries uh, in their own. And why are they important? Well, they're fundamental for us to understand what are the policies on the ground or the strategies on the ground in terms of funding, in terms of um, stakeholders, in terms of uh, strategies for the, uh, the, and what are the areas that the Research Data Alliance can be most valuable and helpful for. There is the very important aspect of language. As I said before, we we are all here today speaking English, which is my native uh, language, but for many, many people, not theirs. And we cannot expect or hope that uh, everybody in the world will speak this language. So having people on the ground to support us, champions, if you like, in regions and in nations to um, translate the, the, the outputs, but also interact with the community and spread the word is fundamental. So how does this family, if you like, work in RDA? Well, then uh, we talk about the beating heart of RDA is actually through these three mechanisms, working groups, which are uh, very focused uh, in time and in uh, objective and in goal. They are um, groups that have a specific timeline. They have a very uh, specific work plan and deliverable that will happen at the end. And they last for anything between 12 to 24 months. We say 18, but normally it's a little longer. Uh, when they finish, of course, then they, they move to a maintenance or whatever, but their outputs remain um, available to the community. Then we have interest groups, well, equally as important. Um, they also produce outputs, uh, supporting outputs that can be very, very uh, valuable for the community, but they are, they focus, they have a broader focus, if you like. So it's an area of um, focus in the kind of problem that needs to be resolved. It might be disciplinary focused, it might be domain, ag uh, domain agnostic, or a type more of an infrastructural aspect but the interest groups, and they last as long as the discussion is ongoing and is valid, 
Often, in addition to the supporting outputs I mentioned, they will spin off a working uh, group that has a specific focus and, um, and a, a deliverable or a objective. And finally, we have communities of practice. They're very large, uh, much larger groups. For the moment in RDA, they are focusing on a domain or a disciplinary area. Um, our example, the one that we have at the moment is agricultural data, of course, which is a very, very large and important global community. And the community of practice has this role of more of an umbrella, internal, external coordination and awareness raising. So. Um, that's sort of in a nutshell, in a very short nutshell, what RDA is about. Uh, the last thing is, of course, if you would like to join uh, the Research Data Alliance, if you're not a member, we um, the membership is free of charge. We ask you to adhere to the guiding principles and our code of conduct. Everybody is welcome. Why would you join? Well, you join because then you can subscribe to the different groups and be kept updated on the activities. You can receive newsletters and notes. And more than anything, I mean, what we know from the uh, our community members, longstanding and new, is that um, the more you give an RDA, the more you get. And of course, we feel that um, together is better. And we have adopted a, an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And that is really the, uh, if you like, the tagline of the Research Data Alliance and the community. So with that, I will uh, leave it to my colleague, to uh, Najla, I believe, who will tell you a little bit about International Data Week and the Research Data Alliance within that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hilary. Thank you, all of you, for being here. Um, so just quickly on the next event that is happening. So as Hilary mentioned, um, Research Data Alliance actually has two events per year. We call them plenaries, where the Research Data Alliance members and all the volunteers get together and discuss in their uh, in their working groups and interest groups and communities of practice how they how they are working meetings. However, every uh, couple of years we get together um, and have something called the International Data Week, and we get together with our associate organizations called CoData and World Data System. And together that makes International Data Week. Um, it happens every two years. The first one happened in 2016 in Denver. Um, and these are very large, diverse, rich uh, programs. And we're expecting over 800 people this year in the lovely city of Salzburg. Um, and we com combine our different programs into a rich into a rich um, program in itself. So the, the University of Salzburg is hosting it um, and, and, and their associated colleagues in Salzburg um, as well are hosting it. So we hope we see some of you there. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, the reasons to attend, well, I think they're self-evident from the, from the the slide, but I think that the main point is that it's a very international meeting and people come from all over the world for IDW. Uh, the last one was in Korea and um, we're hoping to see many of the colleagues again at this event. So it's a, it's a very international um, place and you can meet um, many different peers, networks, all involved in many different aspects of data sharing solutions. So there's many panels, there will be keynotes, there'll be breakout sessions and plenty of time to network during the actual program itself. Um, and the program, um, can I have the next slide, please, will be um, along four different themes. So these are the plenaries. So these are the, the sessions that everyone will come together. And then throughout that will be separate, separate sessions in itself. But you can see the four themes here, which is about inclusivity in open science, data and global challenges, ethics and AI, and spatial information science. So the program committee from all of the three organizations have got together and decided those are the themes of, of, of this particular round of International Data Week. So expect a good program with excellent speakers. <clears throat> I just want to mention, so separate from the Research Data Alliance is SciDataCon, which is the other part of element of International Data Week, um, organized by CoData and the World Data System. And they will have 
Also in the program, these are the overarching themes, which I won't go into detail. So Research Data Reliance will have its programs well built into it. And then SciDataCon will also, because we want to flag up that it's it's quite complex because there are many different elements of the program. But um, once you've got it, it'll be an, it's, an, it's an excellent occasion to, to cover all of these different themes. So there will be many different parallel sessions to choose from, six in total, altogether uh, 36 thematic sessions and 12 sessions with many different individual presentations, plus a poster session. So that's for the SciDataCon element. And together we combine that into IDW with the um, Research Data Reliance sessions, which you can see in green. So the purple are the plenary, which we all come together, present the four themes. The blue are the SciDataCon sessions and the RDA will run its working sessions where all the working groups and interest groups come together and actually get work done. And, and many of you may already be members of these and, and know, know how that works. And then there will be, as you can see, plenty of time for networking and social events and plenty of breaks. So expect a, uh, a wonderful week uh, full, of, full of different thematic areas and plenty of interesting people to, to discuss your data solutions and sharing and um, ambitions with. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to hand over now to Connie, I believe, who's going to help you navigate the whole programme. Thank you, Najla. Uh, thank you for sharing that wonderful overview of IDW 2023. So as Najla said, my name's Connie. I am the Community Development Manager at the Research Data Alliance. And now I'm going to zoom in and we're just now for, for the next few slides going to focus specifically um, on the RDA's 21st plenary programme. So here you can see on the right hand side, we've got a screenshot of part of the RDA's 21st plenary programme, and you can access the link there on the slides for the full programme. So um, as, as Najla said, there is a lot going on. We've got 48 different sessions that are specifically for the RDA. Um, and they are spread out across the four days. Um, so from Monday, the 23rd of October through to Thursday, the 26th of October. And those 48 sessions are actually running in parallel during eight different breakouts. Um, so plenary attendees can really select the session that is of most interest to them during each breakout. And the sessions are coordinated and organized um, by the heart of the RDA, as Hilary mentioned, we've got these RDA community groups. So the sessions are run by working groups, by interest groups, and we also have a birds of a feather session. So this is, you'll see that in the program um, as a boff session. And these are really sessions that are only run at the RDA plenaries. And the idea is that any RDA member can propose a topic for a birds of a feather session. Um, and the idea is to propose a new topic that is not currently being covered by an RDA activity. And it's a really good way, a great opportunity to inject um, novel, impactful and innovative ideas into the community. And the expectation here is that a birds of a feather session, if it is deemed of interest and importance and it gains traction within the community, then it will develop into a working group or an interest group. Next slide, please, Arena. Thank you. Um, so now we also have the RDA 21st plenary pathways. Um, and so these were actually devised by the RDA's Technical Advisory Board or the TAB. And they have, there are 11 different pathways. So these are essentially different themes that have been put in place by the TAB to help RDA members and specifically newcomers to be able to select sessions that are of most interest to them. So I actually remember my first plenary um, and because you've got the breakout sessions and there are 48 different sessions, it can be quite challenging to know which, ses which sessions um, are of most interest to attend. So you can also view the link that's there again in the slides uh, if you want to look at how to navigate the plenary um, by the pathways. But we also, if you look at the left hand side, have what we call the RDA plenary pathway synopsis document. And this is a downloadable PDF that gives an overview of all of the different RDA plenary sessions, as well as information about relevant RDA groups recommendations and outputs, so the deliverables that the working groups and interest groups produce, and also information about domain ambassadors. So these are active RDA members that might be able to serve as a point of contact for you, uh, depending on your interest. 
So now just focusing on navigating the RDA's 21st plenary via the pathways, you can see here on the screen at the top, we've got um, an example of a session. So you can see the breakout session that this session is a part of. You can also see the type of RDA group that runs the session. And this icon here just indicates the group status. You can also see the link to the RDA group page, which will give you some background and context to the group. And you can also see a link to the RDA P21 session page. And that will give you uh, background, aims and objectives, and also the agenda for the session. But importantly, you can see here that each session is color coded according to the pathway that it is relevant to. So you can see this particular session is relevant to the fair care and trust principles, fair care trust adoption, implementation and deployment, and also research software. And then finally, you can see the venue room. So if you're attending the RDA's 21st plenary in person, you'll be able to locate the session that you would like to attend. And this is something really fun to share with you. So two of our community members, Sarah Al-Gabali and Alison Lister, both came together to co-author this blog, a fun guide to navigating the RDA universe for new members. And this blog really gives a, a fun and very lighthearted uh, insight into the RDA community and really gives you uh, some idea of what to expect if, this, if you're attending this as a first plenary, so if you're a newbie to the RDA. And the blog really shows the value of the RDA in terms of community, how you can take the opportunity to build your personal and professional networks and what it means to really collaborate um, and exchange knowledge with an international audience of data experts. And I should also mention that at the end of this blog, there is a really fun quiz that you can take. It's, it's quite short, it's really easy. You can do it on your own. You just answer a few questions um, about your involvement in the RDA and you can find out what your RDA persona is. And I actually did this yesterday and found out that I am a social butterfly, um, which means that I am supposedly the heart and soul of, of the RDA party. Um, so I would definitely urge you to read that blog and just have a look at the quiz at the end for a bit of fun. And then finally, before I hand over uh, back to Arena, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to the Technical Advisory Board or the TAB, and you can see all of their lovely faces here on the screen. So the TAB are really a critical component of the RDA. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they are responsible for devising those plenary pathways so that you can navigate the program a little easier, but they do much more than that. Um, so they provide expertise and advice to council, and they also serve as a liaison for the various different RDA groups to support them with the establishment of the groups, but also providing guidance uh, to the groups during the plenaries um, and reviewing session proposals. You can read more about what the tab do if you want to access the link in the slides. Um, but you, if you join the RDA and if you attend the plenary, um, the tab members are quite involved in many of the groups as members and also co-chairs. So they're well integrated in the community and I'm sure you will see some of them again in the future. So thank you very much. I think I hand over to Irina. Thank you very much, Hilary, Nigella, and Connie. Um, let's move on to the registration and the event platform and the venue. So as many of you are aware, the International Data Week is a hybrid conference and we offer on-site and online participation. Um, so online component of the conference will be run uh, fully on the online event um, Hoover and I will give you a quick overview about the platform itself a little bit later. Um, so what is the difference between in-person and virtual participation? Um, both of them include um, various ticket types from early bird to a reduced student ticket rate. Um, we, also, we also offer reduced tickets fees for lower and lower middle income countries. And you can see from the slide that um, what each ticket type includes. So apart from standard elements for on-site attendance, um, such as full online access to the Hoover platform, all recordings, catering materials, uh, we also offer a social event, which is included in the on-site registration fee. Um, and I will share the details later. 
the online ticket type includes access to all virtual event components to the four-day event and all the recordings. I should also mention uh, the cancellation policy. If you would like to cancel your registration, um, you can do so by notifying the local host via an email you can see on the screen. Uh, if you cancel it before 22nd of September, you will get 80% refund. And after 22nd of September, tickets are non-refundable. However, ticket upgrade is available if you would like to swap it to your colleague, for example. And lastly, you can see the cost for on-site and remote participation. Um, you'll have time to purchase a discounted tickets under the early bird fee type, and it is still available in, until the 15th of September. Uh, now, you might ask how to register and pay. Um, we offer two globally recognized payment options, and the most common are credit and debit card transfers and the international PayPal system. And how would you register? So you can see there are a couple of steps listed on the left-hand side, and I will run through them. Um, first, you will need to proceed to the International Data Week website, as I will do right now. And here you will see all information about the registration with deadlines and um, what each ticket type includes, including cancellation. And so on the top, um, you will have access and a link to the Conftool registration system. And this is a system we will use for the registration. So just bear with me a moment. I will proceed and will demonstrate you how it works. Um, so you will need first to create an account on this page. As I already got an account, created my details are on the system, and I will simply log in. But I should reassure you that uh, the registration form, which is available on this page, is very simple. And you will just need to fill in the general information about yourself and um, log in. And you will see a registration form, which you will need to again fill in and select the tip ticket type you would like to purchase and proceed to the um, registration. Um, unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate that because I've already purchased my ticket. But again, the system is very, very simple to navigate. So once the form is complete, you will choose a payment method and confirm your registration. Um, you'll receive an email confirmation confirming your participations. And I should also um, warn you that um, Conf tool does not um, take any payments. It will be done via a different separate system. And an email you will receive will have all steps listed on how to proceed and pay with direct links. And you'll have exactly seven days to make a payment. Otherwise, your registration will not be confirmed. So I will now go back to my slides. And uh, moving forward, I would like to mention a little bit about the platform Whova. So Whova was used in, during the previous International Data Week 2022 and uh, was decided to be used again. All International Data Week 23 registered attendees will have access to Hoover about a week prior to the event. And everyone will receive a link to access the platform via an email you use during the registration process. So you can see a quick screenshot of Hoover's main dashboard on the slide. And this is exactly how it will look like once you log into the main page of Hua. And the menu will be on the left hand side, as you can see here, where you will find agenda and will be able to join any sessions on the session sub menu, view speakers, um, attendees, and communicate via community and messages. Um, we will be sharing more details on how to use and navigate Hoover with all registered attendees closer to the event. And so the next slide uh, provides some details on the venue in Salzburg. Uh, the Salzburg Congress Conference venue in the um, festival city will host the International Data Week participants. So venue is very centrally located and offers a couple of minutes walk to the city center. And you can see from the slides that the conference is a modern um, modern space with uh, quite large rooms 
And these photos are a couple of examples from rooms where the International Data Week will be held. Um, we have also prepared a couple of social events and networking um, opportunities for you during the event. So on Monday and Wednesday, there will be a music event and social bar hopping. I will not be able to share any more details about it as I do not have it. Our local hosts keep it in a secret. However, on Tuesday, we will hold an in-person poster session and um, there will be no virtual poster session this time. So a couple of hours will be allocated and around 100 in-person posters will be presented in the registration area of the venue where we'll have a networking event. So please do join us. And um, that's all I had to say about um, our fast approach in International Data Week and including the RDA's plenary. And to end the webinar, we would like to share um, some exciting news about the next edition of the International Data Week 2025. So it's coming to Australia and it will be hosted in Brisbane in mid-October. The event will be collaborated with the Australian Research Data Commons and National Research Infrastructure for Australia. And it will be co-organized with three global data international organizations the Research Data Alliance and World Data System and Core Data. We will be delighted to share more news in the coming months with you. So save that date for now and prepare for Australia. I hope we covered the main aspects of the registration and the other elements of the International Data Week and you found them useful. So now we have time for any questions you might have. So please do use Zoom chat or raise your hand and we will be delighted to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. So there is one question that's come through to me and maybe I can start with that whilst people are thinking. Um, I think Irina may be your best place to answer this question. There's a question on travel. So is there support for travel and subsistence or any other subsidies available? Thank you very much, Connie. Um, it's a good question. So unfortunately, we do not offer any um, subsist subsistence for travel. Um, however, we do offer a reduced registration ticket types, such as early bird. And as I mentioned, it is still available for all ticket types um, before the 15th of September. Additionally, if you are from low or low middle income countries, we do provide a very reduced ticket type. However, if travel is not possible, which everyone understands um, these days, um, we do offer fully online registration fee tickets, which is um, pretty much affordable and you do not miss on anything. You have uh, access to all recordings, all sessions. Uh, you will be able to network with every single attendee via Hoover platform, as I mentioned. So um, I do believe that um, these packages will offer something to everyone. Thank you, Irina. Please feel free to add any more questions in the chat as we go. Um, we do actually have another question as well that's been sent direct. Um, Maybe Hilary, you can answer this one. So what type of attendees can I expect to meet and how can I network with them during the plenary? Thanks, uh, Connie, and thank you for asking the question. Yeah, so <clears throat> that's the thing, I, I suppose it's hard to explain, but it is such a multi-stakeholder event, uh, International Data Week already. I mean, the Research Data Alliance plenaries are quite like that, but with International Data Week, we had this added layer, if you like, of um the community from between uh that are if you like more affiliated to codata and wds um we see everything from funders to you know decision makers policy makers to people on the ground infrastructure managers librarians um domain uh, specific or domain experts around data so and i think if we think well the feedback that we normally receive is that Traditionally, many of these stakeholders have their own conferences that they would go to where they meet their peers and things, but ORDA offers that if you like more multi-stakeholder um, 
uh, aspect and therefore IDW even more so. Um, so that is who you could expect both online and on, 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 on site. In terms of networking and connecting with each other, well, Hoover, uh, the platform, offers quite um, a good, uh, if you like, feature, a lot of features around networking, access to the, to the list of participants. You can message with each other directly. Many, many times in the in all the years we've used Whova, the platform, we've seen many uh, side conversations and connections being made between groups of people from the country or with a specific interest or with something that has nothing to do with the work aspect at all. We have a, a, a coordinator, a person who will be dedicated to Whova through before, during and after the event, who will also help to facilitate the um the networking aspect online. Uh, on site, of course, there are many, well, Irina you know, outlined the social uh, events, which are always really important uh, during, a, during a conference. There's, apart from those, there are other many, the breaks in the, the coffee breaks, the, the lunch breaks are quite long, also purposely to allow people and in a central area, a networking opportunity. And of course the posters, uh, offer that too. So we are on the ground, all of us that there help in, in the hope that we can help because as I said in the beginning, building that social bridge is really important and is very close to RDA's heart and something that we want to do. So um I think that the networking aspect is one of the one of the great ones in, in the RDA. Thank you, Hilary. Thank you. It does. Um, so any other questions from the audience here today. Please feel free to unmute or you can drop them in the chat. We did have also a question um, previously about do you have to be invited to a breakout session meeting to attend or are you free to attend any meeting? Um, maybe I can just answer in short um, that you are free if you've got a plenary registration to attend any of this, any of the meetings, including the plenary sessions or any of the working meetings. So as Hilary said, with the guiding principles, the RDA is open to all um, who are involved. So there is um, no restrictions on the sessions that you can attend if you do join the plenary, either virtually or in person. Um, but feel free to supplement that to any of my colleagues if you want to add anything. I should also mention that the recording will be available and we will be able we will be sharing it with all of you after the webinar. And we will also share the slides with you so you will be able to go through them and um, connect with links and go through the program in details. And if you're not registered yet, um, do so and share, of course, um, our webinar with your colleagues. And also it will be available on our website. So um, everything will be mentioned in the email. And please do feel free to share it with um, those who didn't attend or might be interested as well. Serena, maybe I might just add one other thing, if that's OK. Um, we are organizing with, the, with CoData, the World Data System, and the local hosts. Um, a more higher level webinar on IDW. So it's more of a look at the framework. Uh, you get more insight into uh, the SciDataCon event. Uh, and then of course the plenary sessions and the different speakers that we have. We believe that this uh, will take place in the, you know, in the next couple of weeks, but um, we will obviously keep you informed about it and again it will be it will be recorded uh, for the uh, for participants to, to view it afterwards but uh, it, it it might be valuable to to uh, to keep that on your radar as well if you want to understand a little more the diff if, uh, what's happening with the slide data card. Okay, um, if there are no other questions, um, we will now end the webinar. Um, thank you all for joining us today. And um, once again, we hope we will see you either in Salzburg or online in October. And all the details will be shared with you um, later today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.